Open with me your Bible in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. And at the same time, please bear with me. Open your Bibles in Psalms 121. Can I read for you chapter 13, verse 5 to 6? Verse 5, it says of Hebrews 13, Let your conduct be, let your conduct, sorry, be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. For we say, for we may say boldly, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can men do to me? Can I read it again? Hebrews 13 verse 5. It reads, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content. Tell your neighbor, be content. With such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can men do to me? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you now open your Bibles in Psalm? Are you in Psalms? The Epistle Lema 121. I read verse 1. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. For my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going in and your coming out. From this day forth and even forevermore. Hallelujah. Can I read verse 5 again for you? The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. Father, we thank you for your word. We give you praise. We glorify you, Lord. As we are here, let your word change our life and impact us to give glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 6 of Hebrews 13, it says, The Lord is my helper. What? I will not fear. What can men do to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor and say, the Lord is my helper. Is my helper. Who is your helper? Ask again your neighbor, who is your helper? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. David says in Psalms that I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. Because I know my help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My help comes from where? From the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And Hebrews says, my Lord, the Lord is my Hebrews says the Lord is what? My helper. It says in the same Hebrews 13 verse 5 that be content with such things as you have. Be satisfied with things you have. Be happy with things you have. Because he said I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then we can say gladly and boldly the Lord is my helper. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Meaning when we got saved as children of God, he did not only save us to keep 
us and to stay with us. He also saved us so that he can help us. Meaning as a child of God, there is no any other place where you can get your help except from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me somebody? Yes. Are you with me somebody? Yes. I love David when he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. It means David knows that his help can only come from God. David does not doubt the fact that his help only comes from the Lord. David is not confused where his help comes from because he knows it comes from the Lord. That's why he says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where comes my help? Because my help, I know, it comes from the Lord. The Lord who made the heaven and earth, who will never allow me to dash my foot against the stone. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor and say, who is your helper today? My helper is the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says when you call upon the name of the Lord, he answers you. Meaning when you are in trouble, distress, problem, situations that, that are troubling you, whatever you name it, all you have to do is to call on the name of the Lord. Who is your helper? And you let him step in your situation and help you. Because he's your helper. David says in Psalms 23 that he leads me in the path of righteousness. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Why? Because you're my helper. You take care of me. You look after me. You make sure I am happy. You make sure whatever I need, I get because you're my helper. I don't have to give anything. I don't have to do anything. All I need to do is to call on the name of the Lord. And you come and you do what? You help me. Whose name are you calling for your help? In Hebrews he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But I will always be with you. I will always. Always means always. It means yesterday, now, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, next year, 20 years from now, 100 years from now. That's always. Forever and always. I will always be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will always be with you. It means even in the situation that you find yourself in today, he's still there with you. You just have to recognize that I have a helper. Who's here by my side? Who's here with me? Who doesn't leave my side? Who's always watching me? Who's always concerned about me? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Paul said we can now boldly say the Lord is my helper. My question is who is your helper? Who's helping you? Ask your neighbor, who's helping you? The Lord is my helper. He helps me in my time of need. He helps me when I am sick. He helps me with my provision. He helps me when I'm not happy. He helps me when it seems impossible. He helps me when it looks like I won't make it, he helps me. Because he's always by my side. He guides my footsteps. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he's my helper, he makes sure I am safe. 
That's why he says when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will raise up the standard. Why? Because he's helping me. He's making sure that I am safe. When sickness comes your way, he's your helper. He's not gone because you are in pain. No. He didn't leave you because you are in pain. No. He didn't leave you because people rejected you. No. He's there by your side. All you have to do is to acknowledge and say, God, you're my helper. And he helps you. God becomes what we say he is to us. Are you hearing me, somebody? God becomes what we say he is to us. If you say you're my provider, he provides. You're my healer, he heals you. Lord, you are my helper, he helps you. Lord, you said you will bless me with all spiritual blessings from the heavenly places. He blesses you. All you have to do is to acknowledge that I have what? A helper. Our problem is when situation comes, we don't call on our helper. We call for our pastors. I'm not saying it's wrong to be prayed for. It's what the Bible says. When you, you are sick, go to the elders of the church. And they do what? They lay hands over you. And you will recover. But in as much as your situation, yes, we do pray for. There is that situation that needs you to say, Lord, you're my helper. And you allow him to come and help you. But Tatabari Nakuri, we always have everything figured out. That's our problem. You already, you already have everything. Everything is already figured out. We forget that we serve a God who created the heavens and the earth by himself and only by his word. Do you know that in creation, it's only, when, it's only when God created people that he used his hands? Do you know that? Do you know that? It's only when he was creating people, me and you, that he used his hands. The Bible says in Genesis, he said to the angels, let us make man in our own image. That was the only time God used his hands. All along, God was just speaking. Let the light, light appeared. Let the world separate with the waters. The world separated. There was the earth and there was the rivers and oceans and, and whatever. Let there be this, it was there. Let there be this, it was there. It was when it came to me and you, he said, let us make men in our own image. Meaning God is the only person who has the ability to command your situation to live. And it lives. Yes, the Bible says life, life and death is in the power of our own tongue. Right? Right? But when I'm in trouble, you know what God is like? What? God is like your trek ayakoloi. How many of us know trek ayakoloi? How many of us know trek ayakoloi? You see, when you have a car, there's this thing they call tracker. Ne? And when people come to steal your car from you, there's a button that you press. Whoever is watching your car from wherever they are, they can see that there's a problem. Isn't it? Isn't it? And they come doing what? They will come rushing. Others, they call you and say, we got a panic button. What's going on? And then you tell them, no, I met people. They hijacked me. They went away with your car. Others, they will send a chopper to go looking for your car. Isn't it? Isn't it? God is that panic button in your car. He is that panic button in your life. When trouble comes knocking, you pass your panic button. You say, Lord, you are my helper. And he comes and fights your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same helper, the same help that you are looking for is the same help which makes sure that you are safe. Know that where I am, my predicament is not a mistake. 
Know that where I am, I didn't land by mistake. Where I am, I am not here because I am a failure. I am not here because I'm not better than anyone. I am not here because I'm the least in my family. I am not here because life is not fair to me. But I am here for the purpose of the Lord. Because he says he is with me. He never leaves. Some says he doesn't sleep or slumber. In other words, his eyes are always on me. I don't have to fear. In Hebrews it says, how I am not, the Lord is my helper, I shall not fear. What can men do to me? Do you know that some of the situations that happen to us is because Ronaba Polosha, we allowed them to happen to us. We give the devil the access to come into our lives and mess us up. Instead of us being happy and content on the fact that I have the Lord who is my helper. I am happy where I am. Even if when I'm in this muddy place, he says he's with me all the days of my life. You will never leave me nor forsake me. What will the enemy do to me? Our problem is the devil uses our mind to get to us. And you open a door for him. Once you doubt that God is your helper, the devil has entered. You've opened the door for him. You have opened a door for him. Situations come, yes, to suggest things that you know they are against the word of God. It's in your ability. That's why the Bible says life and death is in the power of your tongue. It's in your ability to tell the situation that I know who my helper is and I know where to find my helper. I know if I can say, God, you are my helper. He shows up and changed my situation. Our problem is we allow God to detect what's going to happen to us. We get prayed for for things we want every single service. You go for an interview. How fit a go interview? You see people, you don't know where they got them. You start looking at yourself. You start doubting yourself. It's like I'm the only one who, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like. You have given the devil an opportunity to come and steal what God was giving you. If you understand God is my helper, even in that situation, the point is the job is mine because God is what? my helper. It's not in my ability to attain the job I'm looking for, but it's in the ability of God to give me what I want because he's my helper. He said he will supply all my needs according to his glorious riches that are in Christ Jesus. I don't have to look convincing or look like I'm going to get what I want. When I want what I want, I know where to go. I go to my helper. I go to my helper. These days, there's this thing they call agencies. So I heard. You register into an agency and when there's something somewhere for an interview, they call you and say, eh, there's an interview of what, what, where, where. Do you want it? He said, yes, I want it. And they will tell you the time and the day. You prepare yourself, you go there. I'm trying to relate what I'm saying into our everyday life. God is like your agency. Remember the Bible says he gives you your heart desires. And whatever you ask in his name, he will do what? Whatever you ask in his name, he will do what? He will do it for you. I know there are situations that when you look at them with our fleshly eyes, they look impossible. Because you are looking at the fact that they need certain things that I don't have. They need certain qualifications that I don't have. They need, they need a license. I don't have a license. They need, they need 
a diploma, a what what. I don't have those things. You don't have to worry about what you have and what you don't have. You have to only be content and know within yourself that I have a helper who is the Lord. And this God is the same God who created the heaven and the earth and everything that dwells and creeps on it. Therefore, it's not in my place. It's not within my place for me to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. The Bible says, don't worry yourself about tomorrow. What you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, where you're going to stay, and so forth and so on. Know that I have a God who's my helper, and whatever he gives me is here to stay. I don't save a, con a, a temporary God. I don't save a contemporary God. I don't save a God who works with levels and modules and what people are doing and status. I save God who created the heaven and the earth. And the heaven and the earth belongs to him. Meaning whatever I want, I get. As long as I don't forget that he's my, he's my helper. Ask your neighbor, who is your helper? Hallelujah. Open your Bibles in Psalms. Psalms 46. Pisaleme 46. Read Psalm 46 verse 1. Please read it louder in your Bible. Psalms 46 verse 1. Read. Read it again. It says, God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in trouble. God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in trouble. Meaning when trouble comes, that help is already available. It's already what? Available. Help is already there. Why do you have to be afraid and despair and fret? Why should you be afraid that they're going to terminate your contract? Because your help is right here in time of trouble. Why do you have to be afraid that they are retrenching people that retrench you? Because your help is right by your side. Your very present help Something that is present is something that is there and existent every time. Present, it's here and now. Why do you have to be afraid of this life? Why do you have to have uncertainties about your life? By uncertainties, I mean this thing that you, you will say to yourself, Why do you have to keep doubting yourself and, and doubting yourself? The Bible says he's your refuge and your strength. Remember Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All means all. I don't care if you have your qualification, but I can do the same job you are doing with your qualification. And I don't have them. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can be a businessman and a businesswoman. Whether I went to school or not, I can do all things through Christ. Why? Because God is my very present what? Help. When you have help, you don't fail. Whatever happens, it happens for purpose. It doesn't happen by chance. It happens for a purpose. Your very present help in trouble. 
God is not only your help when you see that now I am sick. You know, the doctor did, 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 did diagnose each all these huge diseases that you can't mention. And when they are saying there's nothing more that we can do, when you have now consumed all tablets and medication. No. God is your help, but at the same time, the devil comes knocking with cancer. He's your helper. That very same time, when they're saying we are retrenching people, next month you might be going, he's your helper. That very moment when they say we have shortlisted people, the people we want we have already taken, he's your helper. That very moment when they say we are so sorry, you know, we couldn't take you, you didn't make it through your interview, that is when you are in trouble. He's your helper. Our problem is we don't acknowledge God for what he is in us. We waste a lot of time and we waste our lives trying to figure out what to do. Trying to figure out what to do. How do I solve this? How do I do this? How do I? We end up doing things that are wrong because we are trying to save ourselves. Whereas all we had to do is to call on the Lord. And he comes to our aid. Some of us, we do unnecessary fastings. Ask his unnecessary fastings. Fasting for things that you shouldn't be fasting for. All we have to do is say, God, you're my helper. You know what's best for me. You said you're never going to leave me nor forsake me. If it didn't come my way, it means it mustn't mine. You said you, what the plans you have for me are of hope, a good future, and of life in abundance. You said you will give it to me, everything above what I am thinking and what I am asking you. I am content in what you have given me. And I am content and confident and sure in what you are still able going to give me. Because you are my helper. I don't have to work extra hard because you're my helper. I don't have to go through fasting just to figure out which one is the one who's supposed to marry me because you're my helper. I don't have to figure out if he's going to be able to take care of me tomorrow and my kids. You're my helper. I don't have to worry if people are coming to my church or not. If they are giving or not. You're my helper. You're the one who sustains me. He's the one who keeps you. He's the one who sustains you. He can't give you a car that you can't maintain. Come on. What kind of a God are you saving? He can't give you a house that you cannot maintain. Come on. He can't give you a double story house that, he, that you cannot put furniture inside. What are you talking about? He can't give you a big bedroom and he doesn't give you a queen size bed. What are you talking about? He's your helper. Acknowledge that I have a helper by my side. Who's always there for me. When they say this is your last week of working, just say, Lord, I know you're my helper. Even if they don't extend my contract, but you are my helper. Even if they don't increase my salary, you are my helper. Even if they don't give me another job, you are my helper. You brought me to this place. You sustained me until now. You will still sustain me to where you are taking me. You're my helper. The Lord is my helper. What can men do to me? What can men do to me? It's not that I'm boasting. I'm quoting the word of God. The Lord is my helper. What can men do to me? We are Christians who don't put God into use. People who are not Christians, whatever they are given in their world, they use it, they overuse it, they end up abusing them. Because they are believing in whatever they are given. You have a God who is above everything, who created everything. He said in his word that I can stretch the heavens by myself. Why doubt him? Why doubt him?
He said in his word that whatever seems impossible unto men, it is possible to me. Why are you doubting? Why are you limiting him in your life? Why? Why are you putting God in a cage? Why? Why are you only detecting what he can do and what he cannot do for you? Tell your neighbor and say, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. You see, when you know that I have a helper, I have a God who is able. I have a God who takes care of me. I'm not afraid of anything. It's like a person who walks around with a gun, a firearm. Right? Have you ever met anybody who walks around with a gun? You will see them even by the way they are walking that yeah, This person has a fire. Well, even the walk will tell you there's nothing you can do to me. You know, they like, ain't nothing, you tripping. Ain't nothing you're going to do. You tripping. What you saying? Who are you talking to? Ain't nothing you can do to me. Because that person knows I have what? A gun. That's how you should be. Come on now. I serve a God who's able. What you talking about? I serve a God who heals all the... What you talking about? I mean, come on now. I serve a God who created the heaven and earth. What you talking about? Come on now. What you talking about? I mean, I serve a God who... The fact that he gave you what he gave, it don't mean that he, he doesn't have the ability to give. He's just doing you a favor to give you so you could have said, my own is coming my way. What you talking about? My own is coming my way. Stop tripping. What are you talking about? I serve a God who's able. That's our problem. When the devil comes in, we start tripping. We start losing weight. We start, we start running heta scatters. Like you don't know the type of God who saved you. In, in, the very, in the very chapter 46 of Psalms, in verse 10, he says, Be still. Read it, verse 10. The same Psalm 46. In verse 10, he says, Be still. Be quiet and content and satisfied. And know in your inability that I am God. And I am above all things. There is none besides me. I am God all by myself. I'm God by myself. What are you talking about? Why are you doubting God? Ask your neighbor, why are you doubting God? You know when you have a helper in the house, your helper, I mean your, your, the person who cleans your house and makes it clean. There's somebody who's going to come clean, right? Am I right? There's somebody who's going to come fix your bed for you. Isn't it? So why, when, we, when the devil comes to intimidate us, why don't we do the same? Get out your banklet and you go about your business and you know that somebody's going to come take your former problems. Somebody's going to come take your former problems. All I need to do is to call on him. And he answers me. And when he answers me, he answers me to my advantage, to the glory of his name. The fact that I'm still where I am, it doesn't mean he didn't hear me. He heard me, all right. He's just waiting for the right time to come and answer me. He's just waiting for you to go about your business, doing what you're doing. Shine all you can shine so that when I come your way, when I overtake you, you would understand that I had a helper that you didn't have. That made me to accelerate all the way to my destiny and I am encountering what you are still waiting for and I'm already having it. Why do you have to worry yourself when they are buying houses? They are buying cars. Hey, Jesus. Since, eh, since I've been working on my Lego. Hi. Oh, since I've been trekking, hi. When I came here, Apostle was driving a white BM. He even has a Range Rover. Hi. God, my own, no. my own are different, though. Which one is different? Is that not how you talk? Eh? Is that not how you talk? 
motho mo rena na re jo ba ba dia dibe mo dimelo re bona tho mo lore bona re bone tareng jo bona bo mmangku na bona ba bidzi wa tseba jo bona bo ntate mo rapedi wa tsa jo bona bo mamma le o re na na lore bona re bone ta le ona re sna ba skepsele sa modimo a ona skepsele mo modimo if you skepsele you are in a wrong place ask kids send away your wrong la hlekile hore le re hore rapela re re kwa wa re kwa a tsebe ta no bona ka tshona re ka bushi re tatswana o tseba ma a pe bana ba ya sekolong lo re ke to ba faeng wena lo tseba eng ke tsebe a ke tsebe o mmotsa ngo ra ona tshelte ya hore ke la bana di jo o nya ka di yang i don't know what is it that you want them to do because when they leave your house they'll be saying the very same thing let's come on ali vale le hore ke la bana bo bi a na yo So what's the point of telling that person whatever you are telling them? The one thing we fail to understand as child of God Gore, God is not detected by our conditions. Our condition does not detect who God is. He is still God no matter what. He is still God no matter what. One thing I like about God is that he is not going to force himself on you. He allows you to give him the access in as much as he has the power and the authority to invade your life. But he gives you the authority to say, "Come in. Come in. I want you with me. I cannot make it on my own. I need your help. I need your help. I need your help." We are children of God who only know how to quote the Bible when things are good. When the devil challenges you, you forget the word of God. When God blesses you, he blesses you to the fact that to the point that he takes you there. You see there where your enemies are dreaming, the type of life they are dreaming to live for you to, for them to live. That's where he takes you. Because he's your helper. He doesn't use protocol. He doesn't use standards. He doesn't use laws. He uses his own ways to take you where he wants you. Why are you fretting? Should I say why are you tripping? A person who trips is a person who you know what is right, what ought to happen. Marawaitia stela and you act like you don't know what's supposed to happen. You tripping. Be confident in your God. I have a helper who's always on my side. In my trouble, my helper is there. In my condition, my helper is there. Let them diagnose you and tell you diseases that you cannot pronounce. You have a helper who's always on your side. Let them chase you out of work and they say you are not good there's no more space for you. You have a helper who's always on your side. Let people leave you and reject you and say you are useless, you will never amount to anything. You have a helper who is always on your side. God doesn't use the way we think and the way we speculate things. I said in the beginning he said I am God all by myself. If I can get you here I can, I might I can as well get you out of it. He said in Isaiah that I have been God since old and I will be God I mean since back and I will be God till your old age. I have been God since the beginning and I will forever be God. He's your helper. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help Why don't you lift up your eyes and see if your helper won't help you Re fela tsa re di ile le dilo tse di sa tshwanelang o diwa ke batho ba reng ke ba pholoshwa You end up selling tomatoes because people are selling tomatoes Cause plan for you is not to sell tomatoes 
All you have to do is to trust in him and lean on him and depend on him and believe that his will concerning your life is perfect. Everybody has to start somewhere. But what's important is that in my start, as I am starting my race, I have to understand I have a helper. Who's the one who's taking me forward? I'm not taking myself forward by myself. I have a helper who is taking me forward. And the, the way that is leading me is the way of righteousness. It will get me to where he wants me to be or where I want to go. It does not have to be like yours. It does not have to look like yours. I don't have to experience it the way you're experiencing it. The fact is I have a helper who's by my side who's taking me there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Read Psalm 121. 124, sorry. Psalms 124. Verse 8. Are you there? If you are there, say amen. Read. Read it again. Hallelujah. It says, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Verse 2 of the same, Psalm 24, it says, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rise against us, then they would have swallowed us alive when the earth was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our souls. Verse 5. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our souls. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us a spray to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Ask your neighbor for the last time, who is your helper? Who is your helper? Who's helping you? Let your, help, let your neighbor answer you. Who's their helper? Is your helper your knowledge? Your wisdom, what you know about life, what you have acquired. Who is your helper? Is it the fact that you know that I can do that business? Is it the fact that you know that I can get a, jo a good job that is going to take care of me and my family? Who is your helper? Some of us are not color to chidika. That are not necessary. David says, from my young age until now that I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his son begging for bread. How many of you have actually trusted in your situation? You say, God, I am content in what I have. You alone are my helper. I'm not afraid of anything. And no man can do anything for me. To me, you sit down. You become content and you say, Lord, you're my helper. 
and you say, I want to see what God will do. How many of us have done that? Some of us, when the situation comes, I'll give you an example, a simple example. You have kids, you are a child of God who has authority to command things. You always hear people speaking testimonies. You know, I didn't have money. Somebody deposited money for me. I didn't have food. Somebody gave me food. You know, I, I was looking for this. And somebody gave... But you've never experienced that for yourself. You know why? Because you're always trying to figure out your way out. And we end up doing things that are abominable as children of God. Why not sit down and say, God, the Bible says, worry not what you should eat or drink or clothe or where you will lay your head. I have a helper. You sit down. You, 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 you just want to see if God will live, live, let you sleep on an empty stomach. Why not just sit at home and say, God, I will not go anywhere. I will not go anywhere. I'm going to sit here and wait for your promises. And I believe your promises. You quote the word of God. You said, Lord, I know you are my helper. You said no man will do anything to me. I'm going to sit here until you come to my aid. There's nothing that I'm going to do to help myself out of this. There's nothing that I'm going to try to figure out for me to get out of this. I'm going to stay right here. You say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will be with me all the days of my life. You said you will never leave me nor forsake me but you will always be with me until the end of the age you said you will provide all my needs according to your glorious riches that I Christ father I'm going to stay here if God was able to give children of Israel a manna in the desert how about you, where you who, who lives in a place where there is a mall how about you If God was able to take Solomon and make him a king over his father's kingdom, when he had brothers who are intellectual, you know, brothers who went to school, who knows, who look good and handsome. What about you? Who's only looking for a position in a company? Not even a king. A king, a chief rules over people, a number of people. You are just looking for an HR position. HR position. That's what you're looking for. Will he fail it to give it to you? Cause it's you. That's why I say our problem is we, we judge God according to our speculations. We size him and tell him how far he can go and what he can do and what not he can do. I serve a living God. I serve. A you need to come to a point where you understand you serve a living God. You are not where you are because of something you did. No, I am where I am because this is where he wants me. There is something he's teaching me out of this. And when I've learned my lesson, he's going to take me out of it. I serve a living God. I serve a God who is able. How many times do we limit God in our times? Medical aid. Medical aid. Leo Castro Valevo told him, Peter was one mala, Lolubutuko, Cogot, Lolubutuko. So she was for you, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to the doctor. How fit a good doctor? Did you once said one day, Ukila Rapella Motomara, you are not sick? Go and change your bed. Your bed is your problem. Rena Matata Renaki, eh? Medical aid. 
Let the fact that our Bible ra rapela arulwa lai ba tono ra rapelela. Lintu esanya king litola muruti. Sechu phone nechal. Kuri le satane asa usubi ajo umwaya so. Halo fufil. We are easily intimidated because we are ignorant of the type of God we are serving. Don't you pray and say you are the king of kings and the lord of lords. Uh -huh. So why all of a sudden are you belittling your, your king all of a sudden because of your problem? A child of a king understand whatever I want, I get Nobody debates, debates my position in the kingdom. I am a child of a king and I should be treated as such. I'm not saying go and have pride. No, no. I'm saying recognize the type of God you are serving. I'm not saying go and have jealous and condemn people. But you condemn them and say, ah, I'll not have a guy. No, 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 no. Recognize the type of God you are serving. Understand that I have a God who will give me what I want and what is suitable for me and me alone. In the right time. Stop behaving. The Bible says he doesn't sleep nor slumber. He doesn't sleep nor slumber. The Bible says you are the apple of his eye. You are the most delicate and precious thing he has. Why are you doubting him? Why? Why are you making God jobless? Let me put it that way. Why are you making him jobless? It's his job to take care of you. Make everything about you alright and okay. Why are you making him jobless? All you have to do is to believe, call on his name, and ask everything you want in his name, and he gives it to you. Why are you making him jobless? Hallelujah. 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 Tell your neighbor and say, I have a helper. I have a helper. Deny to confine yourself to the situation and the condition of the world or society you are living in. The Bible says, do not conform yourself to this world, but renew your mind by the word. Don't make friendship with the, with the world. Let the world set its standard. But you live according to the will of God. Don't let God's standard to now suit the standard of the world. You have a helper. Why don't we quote scriptures that are relevant when we are in trouble? Other than quoting scriptures that are irrelevant when we are not in trouble. Botata ba rena kuru warena mudimu ubereka idlo kama kadi sepla boze dire right. Upa la kusha ure kimu dimu liye dilo dinchi di sekami udula ali mudimu. Ai nyake kuru ba dume la kuba abadu me udula ali mudimu. I asked a question on on Wednesday that says, if I said to people, if God was able to sustain you until now at this age that you are, will He start failing you now? Eh? Will He start failing you now? God is not failing us; we are the ones who are failing God. But today, I want you to understand that you have a helper. Your situation does not condemn you. Even the Bible says he does not condemn you. So don't condemn yourself by what you are going through. Understand that you have a helper. 
it's for your good. Understand that you have a helper. He allowed you to be where you are. You don't have a job. It's good for you. You still have a helper. You are sick. It's good for you. You still have a helper. You are rejected. It's good for you. You still have a helper. You are poor. It's good for you. You still have a helper. The Bible says everything happens for good for them that are in the Lord and that are called by his whole purpose and those that he loves. Whatever is happening to you is not a coincidence. You have a helper that you are supposed to call on in times of trouble and let him be the Lord, the one who takes over your life and change it for you. Stop figuring things out for yourself. The more you figure out, the more complicated it becomes. The more medication you drink, the more sick you become. You have a helper. You have a helper.